In this video, I'm going to show you how to use custom authentication in Flutterflow using JSON Web Tokens. Now, before we set this up, let's understand how JSON Web Tokens work. So here's the process. You've got your front end and back end. When a user signs up or logs in, you'll send that authentication data, like an email and password, to your back end service. So this could be Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Xano, or any service that supports JSON Web Tokens. Then the back end will generate a token, send it back to Flutterflow and Flutterflow will securely store it. After that, any other requests to your backend, like getting photos, will only work if you also send along that token. Flutterflow also allows you to set a time for how long this token will be valid and a refresh token so that users can securely stay logged in. Okay, let's set this up. So come down over here to your settings and into authentication. You want to enable authentication and then choose the authentication type of custom. Next, you want to set your initial pages. So your entry page is the page that the user will be directed to when they're not logged in. So that'll be like the sign in page. And we have one set up right here. And then when the user is logged in, the page that they'll be directed to, and that's this logged in page that I've got right here. Okay, down here, we've got a few additional options. The first one is for persisting authentication sessions. This just means when the user closes the app and then opens it again, if they've been authenticated before, they'll be authenticated now. That is, their tokens will be securely stored on the app. This is great so that the user doesn't continually have to sign in every time they use your app. And this final option down here allows you to associate your user to a data type. Well, what does that mean? This is for if you want to store additional information about your user that you can use throughout your app. Things like a unique user ID or a first name and last name. And we'll set this up, but not yet, because I want to show you it when we actually encounter it when we're building out our auth. All right, so we're ready to start building this out. So let's come into our UI here and into our authentication page. And let's start on this create account tab right here. So we get into get started because we want to bind the logic there. We're in our second tab here and let's add an action. I want to give ourselves a little bit more space. So let's open it in the action flow editor. So what do we want to do? Well, you might think that we just want to go straight for our authentication. And when we search for it, we can see our custom authentication and we want to log in. But this is actually the second step because remember, the logic is to send the authentication credentials to your backend service first, then we receive an authentication token back that we give to Flutterflow. We would put that here. So first, we need to make a call to our backend. And remember, that can be whatever backend you're using. For this demo, I'm going to use Xano. So here in Xano, I've got all of these endpoints set up. And for the sign up one, we're going to use this post sign up endpoint. So let's go in there and take a look at it. It accepts a name, email, and password. And it's going to create an authentication token and then return it. Okay, great. So we're just going to need this endpoint right here. So I'm going to copy it and we can jump back into Flutterflow and we need to set up an API call. So let's close this out for now and go into our API calls. And I've got this set up already right here. Then we need to set up our body, which I have already done with our name, email, and password. These are coming from variables, of course, because this will be dynamic data, because each different user that will sign in, this will be different data. So we have those variables set up here, and we're just referencing them here. So our value for our name is from a variable, and that variable is name. And let's go into response and test. Let's change it to Jane and let's change Jane's email. And when we test it, beautiful. We get that authentication token back as we expected. Next, we want to come down here to our JSON path so we can save the path to this authentication token because that's the token we're going to need to store securely in Flutterflow. This is our JSON web token. So we want to add this JSON path here, give it a name. We're going to call it Jot and save it. Beautiful. So now we're ready to put this call in before we do our authentication action. So we can come back over here. We can come back into our action flow editor. Let's add an action here. It's going to be an API call and it's going to be our sign up call. We need to set our variables that is pass in those authentication credentials. And so we're going to want our name. We're going to want our password and we're going to want our email. 
we're all binding those to the widget states in here. So we have first name and we've got our password. So that is password and then finally our email. Beautiful. Now let's just rename our output variable so it's a little more understandable. So we're going to say auth response. Great. So now we need to change this order of logic right here because we make this call first and then get the token and then pass that token into our authentication here. So we can just grab this and we can cut this action and we want to paste it in here in our true branch. And that's because we only want this to happen if this call is successful. Beautiful. Now we're ready to bind these values. So we want to give it our authentication token, which will be from our action output. Outputs, and there's our variable right there. Next, we want to say what from that response do we want this to be bound to? Well, it's part of the JSON body and a specific JSON path. That path is the one we already defined, our jot, and that's it. Confirm. Beautiful. Now, you can see here that we've got additional information that we can set for our authentication action. Now, these two go together right here because you've got a refresh token and when the token expires. So here's what's going on. Normally, your authentication authentication token will only be valid for a certain amount of time. And if you receive that time back from your server, you can set that here. Once you've gone past that time, then this authentication token is no longer valid. Well, that's kind of annoying. So you're just going to be randomly logged out. Well, no, that's what refresh tokens are for. If you have a refresh token after this time has expired, you can use this refresh token to get a new authentication token. So for the user, they will have a seamless experience. They won't experience anything, but the app will be more secure because this means if for any reason that authentication token is compromised or the user's device is stolen, their account will still be secure. Okay, but what happens when this time expires and this token is no longer valid? Like, will they be logged out? Well, not exactly. There are two things to think about. First, if they close their app, it expires, and then they open it again, they will be logged out. That's provided that there isn't a refresh token. Or said another way, Flutterflow will check for authentication, will check for this token when the app is opened up. Flutterflow will not automatically check at any other time in the app, like navigating between pages. But that's the second thing you can check for yourself. So you have access to this. So let me show you. So if I come into any bindable attribute so I can just see what bindings I have available, I've got this authenticated user and inside there, I've got all of these options. So whenever you want, you can check if the user is authenticated. So maybe if you have an especially sensitive or secure page, you want to double check for authentication there. Okay, let's go back into our logic. All right, next, you can set a refresh token if you have one. We're not going to send it for this demo. Then you can set your token expiration time. This is a Unix timestamp, and we're not going to set this either. Next, we have a unique user ID. Most of the time, this will come from your backend, and you would set that from your call. We're just going to leave it blank for now. And then we get to set user data. This is for storing additional information about your authenticated user. So what happens when you click this on is that a user data type is created for you. And you can see this here, but I want to show you where this lives. It's in this section right here. And it's automatically populated with three fields that you can delete or you can add more fields to. So I'm going to add in a first name field and it's a string and create that there. And you can add whatever you want in there. So I'm going to go into my off settings and now we've got this user and I want to set that field of our first name because I'm collecting that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab Grab that from our widget state. Ah, there it is. First name. Beautiful. Okay, so that's it. That's a basic setup. So we've sent our authentication credentials to our backend. We've received back a JSON web token and we've given that to Flutterflow to authenticate our user. So now the user is authenticated. So next we want to navigate them to our logged in page. So let's come in here. Let's add a navigate action and we want to go to that logged in 
page. Beautiful. Now let's take a look at this second step in the process. That is, whenever we make additional calls, we need to pass along that JSON web token. So let me show you how that works. And to do that, let's first look at the endpoint we're going to be using in Xano. So down here, I've got this photos endpoint where I'm getting all my photo records. And here you can see that authentication is required. That means I need to send along that token. So let's set this up. We're going to close out of here. We're going to go into our APIs and we've got this get photos endpoint. So the URL is correct here. And then we just need to add our header. So we're adding this authorization and a bearer token right here. Of course, this needs to be a variable because it's going to be different for each user. So let's come over to variables here and define a variable that we're going to call jot and string. And now we can reference that in our header. So space and JWT. Beautiful. So let's save that. And let's first go over here and test it. We're going to include our variable right here. And let's just put in something that we know won't work. So let's test our call. And we can see we're getting an error because it's unauthorized. So let's get a legitimate token and then try this again. So let's save this call down here, go to sign up and let's go into response and test. Let's add in Jane E and test our call and beautiful. We get a token right here. So I'm just going to grab this and go back over to get photos, come into response and test and put in that token. Now, when we test our call, it works beautiful. And the same process is with all API calls. We need to define our JSON paths. I've already done that. I've grabbed this items and you can see the paths we need are going to be the image and URL field just for this demo. Okay, let's go bind those. So let's come into our UI here into logged in. We're going to come to this list view right here and we are going to add a query. It's going to be an API call. It's going to be the get photos and we need to set a variable that our JSON web token right there and we're going to bind that to our authenticated user authenticated token. Beautiful. Let's confirm that and we come over to give these things a name and we call them photos. We're going to bind that to our response and that path we defined already. Let's save that. We're making a bunch of children that beautiful. And now we just need to bind it to our images. So let's scroll down to the path and we want to go to that photos item and we want to further JSON path and it will be dot image dot URL. Beautiful. So now we're all set up when our user signs up, we'll get that token, we'll store it securely, then we'll be navigated to this page where we can make another call with that token. So we're ready to test this out. All right, so let's create an account and get started. And beautiful. There we go. And that's how to set up custom authentication with JSON web tokens in Flutterflow.